I'm uh, Mark Cooper, and uh, I was, uh, I'm actually a native of Santa Barbara. Uh, my uh, parents uh, came uh, at the end of World War II from Florida, where my dad was in the Army Air Corps. And we grew up uh, not far from here, uh, on East Pedregosa Street, the very earliest years of my life, I remember being there. And actually coming to the museum, probably at the age of, I'm thinking somewhere between one and three, and my strongest memory, as Rose and I have discussed several times, uh, pushing the rattlesnake, uh, at that time, doorbell button to, to make that rattlesnake rattle. This museum has been a part of my life from, from almost from day one. Yeah, and, that's uh, so it's wonderful. It's a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous experience. Yeah. I have strong memories of the joy I found here as a little kid, uh, being in a museum, seeing things that were just amazing to me. Dioramas that I couldn't believe were that real, that were so incredible, that looked just like what I'd seen around me. And I went to, obviously, schools here, Harding School, Coomber Junior High, and Santa Barbara High School. Uh, in that process, uh, I got involved in Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Explorer Scouts. It turned out that one of our leaders was the dad of a good friend of mine. Uh, his name was Jerry Abbott, and the dad was Waldo Abbott. And it turned out Waldo was actually the curator of uh, ornithology, as I recall, mm -hmm. here. But he had a wide-ranging interest that he knew about, about bird life and Natural, the natural world here was just amazing. I remember going out on digs with him, and I'm sure it was Phil Orr. Just a fascinating experience, and I just got, I was captivated by the, by what he was teaching us and telling us, and, and, and we, we were hiking everywhere. As we got older, we would backpack all throughout the National Forest on trails in the backcountry that no longer exist. And every chance we got on a weekend, we wouldn't go party, we'd be out in the backcountry camping or backpacking. When I was um, brought back to Cal Poly, I was offered a position on the faculty there and worked my way up to being a full professor. I took s several periods, five to seven years out, of teaching to go and, and do uh, development of some, a center and then and then also uh, a lot of corporate giving to do endowed laboratories and other kinds of things. I could begin to see if you're going to put capital into development, it's patient capital. But if you put it into plant giving, it's got to be really patient capital. But, but, but the payoffs, when they happen, are really fundamentally um, institution altering. They can make huge differences. You know? mm -hmm. And I became fascinated by listening to the people who became interested in what we we're doing and listening to their stories and listening to what they had to say, finding that connection between what they were interested in, what fascinated them, and what the institution was doing. When Ellie and I married a few years ago, we decided to reorganize our estates and I wanted to leave some, some gifts to some special places in my life. I wanted to do something to really underpin the mission of the museum in a way that uh, an annual gift doesn't do. The endowed monies, the monies that are going to be allowed, mm -hmm. they're going to stabilize this institution through ups and downs, uh, are, are important to me. Mm -hmm. and, and also to set an example. If I could set an example for others to come and see all of the exciting things, and there are some great things that are going on here, mm -hmm. very exciting things. We set the stage for their finding that same sense of enthusiasm and joy mm -hmm. uh, and just being here, you know, and being a part of this or seeing the planetarium, you know, and uh, butterflies, the sea center, you know, all the things yes. that happen there, which are, are just wonderfully uh, complementary to the other maritime things. And I, we live in the harbor, so mm -hmm. the maritime environment is really important to us, and we are, we are proud to have that be uh, a part of our estate. The museum has made some incredible progress doing some infrastructure things. And I really believe in infrastructure because it permits us to make the next leap forward and to find more places where people will become captivated by what we're doing here, which is absolutely marvelous. That's amazing. And it goes way beyond pushing the doorbell, you know, <laughs> on the rattlesnake button to all those programs that just uh, just grab people, you know, and say, oh, this is the core of the community here. This is, this is something I want to see, you know, in my life. You know, so. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Michelle.